They were also done, there's a few fake stones that have been done by, for tourists, and I hope that they can see this. And also you can run it over the whole stone. We've done that. We went to the Cabrera Museum in, in uh, Ica, Peru. We had a skeptic. We had skeptics. We had a Ru Russian Andean scholar who has a PhD. We had computer technicians. We had independent people. We did an on-site investigation. We took 40 stones right on site at the Cabrera Museum with a USB digital microscope. And the skeptics would choose stones that they were sure were false. Yes. They would choose the dinosaur stones, mostly. Independent people chose stones. They're neutral people. Believers chose stones. After all day of an investigation and a test that all felt was fair, I mean, I'll tell you, there was a deafening silence that descended upon the critics because they could see there wasn't hacksaws used, there was patina in the grooves, every indication of a, a degree of antiquity. And so this further authenticates the Ica stone. I, I believe it. In fact, we have some in possession at the Creation Evidence Museum. Now, the critics have said that Dr. Javier Cabrera et al. used shoe polish to blacken these areas. Would you answer I that appreciate criticism? I appreciate you saying that. Because Dr. Well, Neil Steedy, who's a freelance archaeologist without a degree, he's tried to debunk the Ica stones. He brought back one to the United States, and they took samples of this. It's not shoe polish. It's tar from the ancient tar pits in south of Okahaje. I have instruments right here that have the same tar on it. If I may step over, I'll yes. show you. These surgical instruments have the same black material the beautiful tar. i want the camera to see this see it's this the same, is incredibly same beautiful yes so neil steedy took pieces out of this there were wood fragments and other stuff in the tar he had it carbon 14 dated it dated to two thousand years ago all right just as we would suspect well, here's what a fake stone there have been a few carved by basilio he was yes. a friend of mine but here's what happened most of the time, these people are uneducated campesinos living out, grubbing an existence out in the desert. They do not know the context. So when you do a stone, he might put a Coke machine next to a dinosaur or a plane flying overhead. He would use a hacksaw blade. And it takes many hours to do it with a hacksaw blade. What happened was, you can't see it with your eye, but inside, under a microscope, we've done the test. You can do it on this stone. If you do a hacksaw, there's little pieces of minute metal that will flake off. It's in there, and you'll see it. Another thing, if you draw on the stone, because you usually, you just don't do it freehand with a hacksaw. Really? They use pencils or, or ink pens. When you draw a dinosaur and you start carving it or you use sandpaper on the outside to sand it down, you're going to leave little fragments. These always pass the test. There's none of that on there. And you don't see any residue. Because no matter how good you are with a hacksaw, you're going to slip, and there's a little bit of pencil residue or ink pen. None of that was found None on the that. stones that in are real. In fact, you described all of that in your excellent book, and you've defended this marvelously. Father, no critic can debunk this. This has been found. It has been authenticated by the National Museum of Lima. It is one of, a very prized possession. This is 400 to 700 A.D. It was wrapped around a mummy, and uh, that was discovered. And there are six dinosaurs on both sides. And I offered $500,000 to any organization based on the R01 video probe, any evidence to try to debunk this. They all lapsed into a profound and prolonged silence, and they wrote editorial retractions or they said they're just mythological monsters, they're not dinosaurs. You have done an incredible job in verifying that man and dinosaur live contemporaneously and verifying that these rather ancient peoples had the technology to produce these stones and the technology, if necessary, to even interact with these dinosaurs. Now, the bottom line for all of this the extreme importance of this is that evolutionary theory has again come into very serious doubt because one of the basic tenets of evolutionary theory is 
that the last dinosaur died out some 64 million years ago, and the first man didn't appear even in dawn primitive form until about two and a half million years ago. But here we have an additional cache of evidence. Hundreds and hundreds of these stones have surfaced because of archaeological excavations in the Peruvian area. This cache has demonstrated that these individuals had to see living dinosaurs in living mode in order to so faithfully represent them. Not bones that they may have found because they represent their skin, dermal frills and everything in a living mode. What this means is evolutionary theory has again been found wanting and that drives us back to the absolute authority of the Bible. In the book of Job, chapter 40, God said to Job in verse 15, Behold, now behemoth, which I made with thee. That's the great dominant ox-like creature. And then he describes him as having a tail like an entire cedar tree and being the chief of the ways of God. That's a dinosaur. God said, I made man and dinosaur. God is always right, and he's right about the need that you have. Wouldn't you right now respond to him as the Spirit of God moves upon your heart? Pray this simple prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner, and I want Jesus Christ in my heart. Lord Jesus, right now I open my heart's door. Come in, live within me. I'll serve you with all my heart. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.